Hello, I'm Matlu Kushi and today I'm going to talk about the basic concepts of MapReduce. In the last two decades, we have seen unprecedented growth in data. There are three main components of big data, volume, variety and velocity. The volume of data is increasing exponentially and there are many varieties of data. For example, in the form of social media posts, news, images, videos and medical data. The velocity by which the data is getting changed or updated also very frequent. Processing such a big data is a challenge. Two Google fellows, Jeffrey Dean and Sanjay Gimawat in 2004, addressed the problem by developing a programming model that they named MapReduce to process such a large data sets. They inspired the idea from Map and Reduce primitives present in Lisp and many other functional languages. MapReduce model is used to parallelize competitions across multiple machines or even over to multiple cores of the same machine. There are many MapReduce implementations since its first inception. The most popular open source implementation is Apache Hadoop. In the mapping phase, the data is passed into key value pairs and in reduce phase, the data is aggregated. Let's look at MapReduce implementation as a very simple example of WordCom. Consider we have these three documents as our input files and we would like to count how many times a word has appeared in these documents. Since we would like to parallelize the task, so we pass each document to separate machine and on each machine, we have a mapping function running map function will pass the data into key value pairs each word becomes a key and value becomes one all of these key pair values are sorted and grouped before they get passed on to the reducing function because we only have two occurrences of data so this data uh, become a key and the value become one comma one and because there's only one occurrence of big, so big become a key and the value is one. This passed to the reducing function, which aggregate the results before they get written to the output. Now let's look at the map reduce execution overview as it's been originally proposed by Dean and Gamawat in 2004 and in their subsequent publication in this can be looked as a pipeline of processing input files and moving on to the mapping phase, saving results into intermediate files, aggregating by reduce function and saving the results to the output files. The map reduce library in the user program first splits the input files it then starts up many copies of the program on a cluster of machines. The master is a special copy of the program. The rest are workers that are assigned work by the master. The master picks idle workers and assigns each one a map function or a reduce function. The map workers read the contents of the corresponding input and parse key value pairs. The intermediate key value pairs produced by the map functions are buffered in memory. Periodically, the buffered pairs are written to local disk partitioned into regions by a partitioning function. The location of these buffered pairs on the local disk are passed back to the master who is responsible for forwarding these locations to the reducer workers. Reduce workers read the buffer data from the local disk of the map workers when a reduce work has read all intermediate data for its partition, it sorts it by the intermediate keys so that all occurrences of the same key are grouped together. The reduce work worker iterates over the sorted intermediate data and for each unique intermediate key encountered it passes the key and the corresponding set of the intermediate values to the user's reduce 
function. The output of the reduced function is appended to a final output file. Now let's look at the map reduce uh, example a Python implementation and we can uh, compare the conventional CDL approach watching versus uh, using a map reduce uh, programming model. So we need a function we're going to call it tokenize it takes a string as a message and then it converts uh, the string to the lowercase because we don't want to get confused with the smaller letters or capital letters. Uh, we extract all the words uh, using the regular expression library and then we return all the words as a set, uh, set of values. So okay. let's run this one and then we can test this function by passing this string hello world. This is test message. Let's run this one. And we can see the output here. Each reward in this string is being returned as a list, as a set of three. We can now uh, we want to count how many times a word has appeared. We can use the counter object in the collection library. So this is a serialized way of doing this counting. I'm going to call it word count underscore O. Takes in the documents and then use the search tokenize function, loop through the documents, tokenize it, and then um, yeah, and then do the counter uh, using the counter uh, library. So let's run this one, and then I've got my previous example. I've got this uh, um, list of strings: data science, big data science, string chain. I'm going to pass it to my work count old, and I can see the result. Uh, I've got data appearing twice. I've got science appearing twice. Big ones and the future. Uh, now let's uh, compare a mapper uh, mapper use uh, approach. So for the map, I'm going to make uh, a mapper function. I'm calling it wc underscore mapper because it's a built-in function. In uh, in the Python, we don't want to get confused with that one, so we need to call it something else. And we use the same tokenized functions to pass the words and uh, we return the value using that yield function, making it a generator. Uh, let's run this one. So that's our mapper function, which is going to convert uh, uh, any document or string into the key value pairs. And we can test with this simple for loop, pass documents to this function, and we'll see how it will look like. So if we pass the same um, string of uh, the list of strings, we can see that we've got all the words appearing as our keys and the value coming up, coming up as one. So now we need the reducer function. Reducer function will take in the word and the list of counts, and it's going to just do the sum up. So again, we making it uh, the generator with a yield keyword. Let's run it. But you see the reducer function cannot take this data because this data has to you know, has to be sorted, grouped together uh, into this form. So we need another function. So I'm calling it word count. So this uh, in the word count, we making a collector, a list of uh, the dictionary. And uh, again, we um, using the mapper function, passing each of the document to the macro function and the new word and count and appending into this collector. So if we want to look at what this collector look like, we can do a print here and let's do collector and run this one again our string and then we call the function. We can see that now the uh, words are basically uh, sorted grouped together. So we have data. Uh, as a key and uh, value is a list of counts. One one of signs of being uh, uh, one one twice and a big one so functional. So then we can basically uh, look through these words and accounts and we could uh, have our actual uh, counting of these words. So let's run it again. So now we have these are the final results output of word counts. Thank you.